Hey team, Matty 231 here with another video today looking at uh, one of the other cars that we've got in the garage, the ML350 Bluetech. So the W166 uh, with the OM642 diesel. So today we're going to be just doing a few things. We're going to do oil change, um, oil filter change on the engine and put a new fuel filter in, a new diesel fuel filter for this car. Um, we're also going to give it a groom, so without further ado, we'll get into it and um, get her cleaned up and get her on the hoist. Let's go. So team, she's in there, um, just on our four jacking points here, they're nice and meaty, which is good. Um, I struggled a little bit to get it fully on the back one. Um, it's still mostly over it, about halfway over it, and it's locked in place on the on the hoist here, so that's the main thing. Because um, obviously you don't want these to come out, so make sure they're locked when you put them on. If you've got, if you've got a hoist, obviously, you'll already know that. Um, and... Yeah, we're ready to go really, so we're just going to take off these bottom panels. I think it's similar to the W164 we used to have. We'll start with taking the bolts off for this one, and that should give us access to the drain plug. I don't think we need to take this one fully off, so let's do that now. So we're just going to drain pump that's facing basically to the front driver's side uh, if you're in America or front passenger side front left um, here that we can crack off with a 13mm socket um, obviously lefty loosey oh we'll have a it'll have a little washer we need to replace as well things so don't forget about that I'll show you that once we've got it out um, but as we've just done we've we've ran the car for about five minutes um, just to get the oil a little bit warm and um, now that was a silly idea because I've got my good gloves on and I don't have my um, disposable gloves on that's coming out now so that's good as well as loosening the oil filler. And while it drains we'll just do a bit of an inspection on the rest of the car and um, underneath here, see what else needs to be done, if anything. 
helps while that drains team we'll get the um the torch so there's that plug there i imagine that's the oil level sensor or the temperature sensor it's beautiful to access wish my um v12 was like that <laughs> you pretty much pull the whole motor out to get to it um okay starting with the left hand side here cv boots are good um main ball joint looks original but still good tie rod in looks okay no obvious leaks from our air suspension everything looks pretty good and dry down here so that's nice yeah all right cool our brake pads on this thing i see them better from this side um you might better see it on camera They're actually getting a little bit low from what I can see. Looks like they've got about four mil left. Yeah, about four mil left of that. Four or five mil left. Probably next service will do the brakes, I think. Should be the same on this side, otherwise we've got something going on here. Um, yeah, about the same. Obviously our tyres are new team, we've got Michelin Pilot Sport 4 SUV tyres. Yeah, these back pads are definitely a bit beefier, they're probably about 70% still. Same with this back one here. Yeah. So our tyres are real nice and new, but we'll still just check them quickly. Um, right hand side suspension. Um, I think obviously leaking or anything, ball joint's okay. Yeah. See the boots good. Half shaft, yep. Um same on this front one. This one I think was replaced actually now um from memory. Um when we bought the car about a year ago it was it was a it was, they installed a new a new one I I believe. Front transfer case looks good, there's no leaks there, which is nice. Sway bar bushings look okay. They're still original but that's fine. Uh, interesting, okay. Um, they've got a different design here now for the cross member for the transmission. There's the transmission mount, um, which you probably don't really have to replace. I don't think I've I replaced one on our 164, but it wasn't actually necessary. It was just me being careless and spending money when I don't need to. <laughs> o2 sensors, yeah, good. Diff's nice and dry. Boots look good. Outer boots, they're definitely original, no doubt, but they're still fine, so we're not going to worry about them right now. Rear air strut looks okay, but it looks like we've got a little bit of something weeping out of this right one. Um, left one looks okay. Sway bar links look original to me. I'd probably do them next time just for the sake of it, eh? They look original. No obvious date stamp anywhere on them, but um, yeah, I'd probably just do them anyway. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, team. I'm confused here. So this is the, um, like my 211 E55. The rear has a shock absorber, which is here. So that's the shock absorber. So that one is actually, yeah, that is leaking a little bit there, as you can see. Just gently. Um, so we need to replace that. But um, if we look at our bellows which are these big suckers here, they're, um, they look fine to me. There's no major wear from them. Just give me a seat. Yeah, no major wear from them. Same with this rear one here, no major wear. But yeah, the shock on this side's okay. And these will, do, these will no doubt be um, original shocks. So yeah, okay, well that's interesting to see. Um, our tyres are good. Oh, now, you'll hear me there, I spun that wheel and we and we turned the drive shaft, so I can't actually do that because the car will be in park. So we're not going to spin these wheels. If we're going to do that, we need to make sure the car's in uh, neutral. 
which in saying that it actually might be a neutral I actually can't remember now it probably is a neutral actually because um when I was moving it on the hoist yeah there we go when I was moving it on the hoist I had it in neutral so I could move it around yeah those tyres are good these tyres are obviously brand new team still but we're just really more checking that there's no um no no clear damage anywhere yeah no, that's cool drive shaft looks good playing it that's good I think I'm pretty happy with everything folks um just on the motor side of things on the front here I've got a nice new looking belt so that's good there's a weird um yeah, now this motor here is the electric assist for the steering so you don't have a steering pump you've just got this electric motor um it looks all fine all our hoses look good Unfortunately, Mercedes has decided to go to, um, oh yeah, okay, I see, yeah. Unfortunately, Mercedes has decided to go to the very little brittle um, coolant hoses, which um, I'll show you later on, like BMW have where they've got those little crappy hoses that snap and break and then you're stranded because your car overheats. Um, this car's got those, unfortunately. So we just want to check them. That idler there, um, right there on the edge of my camera the surface of it's just a little bit warped and like heat I don't know like it's been affected by heat or something it's a bit funny looking um, I believe the belt yeah the belts were done recently so I'm going to trust that the dealership um, did everything properly and they're happy with it and they've got no no issues so we won't worry about it right now but later on we'll go in and um, replace that pulley as well No obvious oil leaks back here. Um, obviously the transmission's back here, but that looks dry to me. I think we'll wrap it up there, team. I think I'm happy with everything. It looks all it looks all pretty good. So um yeah, we'll start putting the drain plug back in. Which is this little guy here. a smaller plug than you find in the um sorry a shorter plug than you find in like the 113s which have a bit of a longer longer plug yeah so we just need to replace that crush washer there if you don't have a replacement give it a real good clean and then um then what you need to do is i usually get like a wire brush and just scratch it up a little bit rough it up a little bit just so it's super clean and um and it, and it might bond, bind a bit better nicely if it's got a bit of a rough surface to sort of make with on the pan when you put it back in. But obviously in this case I've got new ones so we're just going to use um, we're just going to use our collection of new ones which I think actually would probably be more this size. So we'll try that and we'll install oh, back in. We just talked the drain plug team down to 30 newton meters here with a 13 mil. Folks, we've got the um, new filter, new oil filter for the one, uh, the 642. This one's just a man OEM equivalent. 
codes 821X, but please check your um, own Merc, obviously it might be. If it's not an ML350, it, maybe it's different filter. I doubt it, but um, don't, don't quote me on that. So um, <laughs> first we want to take off the old, um, the old O-rings, like we do on every single Merc from this generation. I think there's a few new ones that run on, um, that have a different type of filter, like some of the A180s and stuff I've seen have slightly different filters. So we've got a little O-ring up the top here as well, I'm just using a pick. When you use the pick, ooh, that one just sort of, did that rip or did that come off? No, it actually ripped. Hmm. That's a first, I wonder if I can pull it out without breaking them. One, two. You'll see here we get a brand new one as well. Um, I forget how dirty diesel oil is. It's black and like st not sticky, but it just gets everywhere. So just um, just keep your environment clean, team. <laughs> um, new filter here though. Looks good. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll put our new O-rings in first. And sometimes I lube them up a little bit. Um, yeah, sometimes I lube them up and sometimes I don't worry about it. But I think we'll lube them up just to be safe. I've just got a little tube of oil here. This is just motor oil uh, for normal cars, but it won't matter. Oil's oil in this for this sort of thing, just to lube it up a little bit. Um, some of them, in, some of the filters come with um, like a white powdery stuff on the filter already and before we do that let's just wipe this because it is a little bit looks like it's got a bit of oil on it cool now we'll install that new o-ring here don't stretch it too hard team just keep it nice and simple there it goes there so it's just on that second ring from the from the base lip and then we've got our little top o-ring and it's important that these are installed properly as well don't don't screw this up <laughs> we need to ensure the oil pressure is held correctly and the oil goes the right way oh easily just slips over like that cool now team what we do is we grab the um filter itself and if you've already done this before you can totally skip past this because i'll be wasting your time but um if you're new to help you out. It goes on there like that and it should click in. We should better pull it down. It should sort of click in and bottom out. There we go. Perfect. So that's how it sits, team. And um, what we're going to do now is we're going to reinstall that. We're also just going to actually suck out the leftover uh, black oil that's in there. Don't have to do this, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Just because it looks so dirty, <laughs> even though it's normally like that anyway. Uh, we'll suck that out and just dump it into our oil, our oil pan here. There's not much room actually for me to hold my thing. starting to remove our fuel filter. So that involves 
essentially taking out the, um, the charge pipe here from the intercooler, um, the, um, the intakes here, the intake system here, and, um, and obviously these fuel lines as well. So there are a few little technical parts in this process um, and some tools you don't have to have but make the process easier. So we'll, we'll jump into it and I'll show you some of that and um, get started. So team, we need to unplug a few things first. Um, so these little clips here, um, these have been replaced on this car just recently. I can't remember what they're called there. I think they're like mass, they're not mass airflow sensors but they're a similar type component. Anyone who knows these, let me know. Um, I've got a copy of it in my email, exactly what it is. But um, so what you got to do is just with a little tool, pull these little clips out gently, and then you can slide the harnesses out. You could bag the harnesses as well, but. Um, it's only for a short period, so I won't worry about it in this case. So I've also got team the um, another one just in the corner here. Again, just be careful with this. Now there's a um, there's a um, uh, I call it, as I say in my other videos, call them a jubilee clip. Um, that's just a brand of clip, but there's just a clip there that basically you can see it holds the um, it holds the um, the the uh, turbocharge inlet ducts onto the filter housing. So we'll just want to remove that and it'll probably be about an 8mm um, piece that goes on there. But you would have seen me earlier use a bit of compressed air on that um, on the engine here. So just use that just to clear out any gunk that's built up. Yep, cool. We'll get that done. We just need a shorter head, a shorter extension. To loosen that up. Down here, it comes off real nice and easy. It doesn't have to be super loose, but definitely loose enough so it can be pulled over any um, the snout of the turbocharger. And then we want to undo these um, air filter clips. They're actually nice and easy to get to. This isn't too difficult yet. Touch wood. Cool. Um, now what do we need? Got those off there. Oh yeah, there we go. So just gently back them off there, team. Gently back them off. Um, no, that's fine. We just don't want to damage. We just don't want to damage the actual units here, the housing units. So just be gentle with this whole process, guys. Cool. Clips. There we go. Easy as that. Perfect. Oh, now there's a bit of oil in this intake here. Um, and I think from memory you've got to be careful with that because if the yeah, so I think we've got the crankcase ventilation. Um, oh, what's it called? The oil. Um, the the oil separator. PCV I think it is, 
and um, this has oil coming through it and I think you need to replace that every now and then because if you don't, if excess oil leaks down in here, it can damage the, um, it can actually damage the, um, there's a, I can't remember what it was, let me look it up and I'll come back to you shortly, but there's some electronics down here that can get fried if enough oil gets onto it and it looks like it is a little bit pretty. So um, while I get around to looking into that other stuff, we'll just remove a few more little bits here. Um, so we want to take this panel off here so there's a little, little, um, there's a number of little uh, brackets up the front here that we need to take off. You probably can't see it on camera actually. So down here, we just got one, two, but we'll pull those off and just um, and then pull that whole cover out, which will then give us access to take this uh, retaining pipe off here. So without actually pulling this fully off team, it's it's on a little um like a little dowel down here. To lift it out I have to take this little um vent line off, which again, as I mentioned before, is made of the cheap plastic. And saying that it's still in good condition. Um so I could pry this off and unplug this here, but I'm just gonna um for now I'm just gonna get my access to this bolt here, which is all I need. Remove this clip and remove that there. And that actually might be all I need for now to get access to what I need to get to. So um, I might not pull it out. But uh, if I change my mind, you'll see it in the video in a sec. I might pry this off and pull it fully out. But let's continue. Cool. So we've just slid that off, team. Pull this little screw here out. Do this one at the top here. Now that we've taken the um, pipe off team, you, um, just as a, a note, you've got two screws down here to take off. You've got one that's down here and that one there. So you need to undo those, which will give this enough play to allow you to pull the snout off here. And then you can then slightly just jiggle it off the top there. Now on this one here, this clip, this piece is very brittle. I was able to like bend it up quite a bit uh, by accident and I realized it was quite soft so just make sure you don't pull on this because you might then bend this and break it. You'll have to replace that whole piece and I hate to know how much that costs. So um, now what we'll do is just take off our, um, our harness for the um, fuel pump, uh, sorry for the fuel filter and um, Might just spray a bit of WD-40 on the tank. Now if you remember correct, I've got a um, proper tool for that, which is these pliers here. I think what we'll do, oh, there we go. While we're here, we'll just shove a bit of that in there as well. Um, so the harness is off. Move that, and yeah, we'll pull off our um, we'll pull off our um, two clips here, which you can do. I think what I normally do if I don't have the tool back in the day, I used to just use like a pick, and um, and I'd put it in the little gap there to lift it up and sort of pry it off. But if you don't have, see, if you don't have the tool, you can try that. There's an alternate instead. Yeah, try that. But I'll um I'll use my tool because I've got one. If you don't have a tool like this already, you should buy one because they are um 
you will actually use them quite a bit if you do a lot of work on your own Mercedes. There we go. There's a little groove on here, team. See? And that groove sits in the front of the clip and it helps basically pry it off. Cool, there we go. Easy as that. So now what we can do is back off these um, clips just a little bit down the hose here and um, and then we can actually take the bracket off for the fuel filter to take the whole filter off. So we've undone the three bolts holding the filter in place and we'll just pull the um, pull the hoses off now. Number two. There we go, cool. Okay, that's the full filter team, take that out. Grab a new one. The new filter team is just a um, OEM Hengst filter made in the Czech Republic. So we'll chuck that back on team and um, tighten it up. Plug our harness in. So we'll just take the little protecting caps off first. Everything in the valley of the V is nice and dry as well, so that's good. It's always a good thing to see. Forgotten team to insert the um, the the mounting clamps. See, so we just need to actually do that quickly. So we need to get a little um, looks like to me a hex. So we'll just undo these team. What I want to do first is I'm actually just going to mark with my pen where this all lines up. So with, with the clamp here, I know it lines up there now, which on the new filter, I can match it closely so I don't have to try and guess where I put it originally. Cool, there we go. So that's just loosened enough now. I'll probably just lift this out. Yeah, there we go. Get our bracket again. Slot that in here, which based on the old one, was basically about there, so that should be that should be perfect where I've put that clamp there. So we'll tighten that up. Oh, look at that! Tighten that up in situ. Cool. Now, um, what I'm also going to do, team. As I'm just going to write on here with a paint pen. I'm just going to write um, the date. I'm going to put 22. Dot, uh, sorry, 23.1, so we know it's been replaced. I'm going to document this anyway, but I just like to do it for good measure. Cool, 23.1. It's not as pretty, <laughs> but hey, it's just an, it's just my wife's email. She never looks under the hood. Only I do, so it's all good. We put our ground back on for the um, for the harness. Cool. It is five newton meters of torque apparently for these bolts, but um, I'm pretty confident at getting that by hand. Cool. 
that's that team. Now we'll put our clamps back on. Clamps back on, like that. And if you've got the tool, if you don't have the tool, don't reuse these. Reuse, um, use just some brand new standard clamps like the ones we've got on the, um, the turbo inlet that, you know, with the seven mil socket, just use those instead. But if you do have this tool, you can use these. Um, some people will re replace them, but I've never had issues with them breaking off, so I'm not going to replace these ones. Other way around, Maddie. There we go. Cool. So that's our fuel full set back install team. Bolts are on, yes. Harness is plugged in. Yes, click. Ground. One, two, three. Yep, those are on. Okay, we're, we're good to go, team. So we'll pull that back out. Um, and we will start reassembling. So I did start t t pulling this piece here off, which I didn't need to, so I'll put it back on really quickly. You don't actually need to take that off, team. That was just me experimenting. Slightly back to there. Yep, there we go. Oh, now when you do that, make sure you do it in the way that doesn't make it hard for the next person, which I've just done. Here we go. And our, I believe, our brake booster vacuum there. Goes back in and um, we'll grab our main pipe. This pipe does have an o ring in it, so um, I'm just going to take the o ring out. I don't have a new one, unfortunately, so I'm going to take it out and just give it a quick clean and uh, reinstall the o ring with a little bit of Vaseline on it. So, our o ring's back installed, team, um, and we've cleaned down the bottom and also cleaned the intercooler inlet, which I believe it is. So then we've put this hose back in, just loosely for now. Um, we've got our O-ring back on. And all we want to do is just assist the snout. There we go, to snug back over. Um, and down here, we just want to make sure this is aligned properly. There we go. So this one here, the um, female screw, torque screw, goes on top, on the top. And then the little short Torx male goes down the bottom here. Now, I'm not going to tighten it up just yet. I'm going to actually reaffix the unit to the um, front of the engine because we don't want to torque anything up and have it the wrong way around. So I've just got my two um, two screws here. One that goes at the top here. to the way. Not too tight, but also not loose. Back on. 
again. Finish it off by hand. So we don't have a cork anything. Cool. That is a wrap on that part, folks. Yeah, that's tight enough. Now, team, we just need to put our front little front cover back on, which I've left conveniently down at the bottom here. So if I yank this guy up here, you can see I don't actually need to pull the whole cover off. Done, done, done. That's all good. Oh yeah, now don't forget this little clip here, team, as well. We'll chuck him back on. There's only two screws, but it sits on a little dowel. So there's one up here, and there's one further down. Not all the way up yet, we'll just put the both in first. Oh, the other one, yeah, of course he goes here. Using a ratchet, I should say. Oh, front cover's on. Now, just as out of respect for the motor, we'll just check nothing's colliding with anything. Just to make sure that nothing's going to rub or touch or scratch or catch when we do our first start. Oh, it looks good to me. Um, now we'll put our um, our intake snorkel back on. I'm just gonna just gonna wipe around there, make sure that's all clean. What we will do though, team, is we will buy a new um, crankcase ventilation system um, tube because I do believe that the original one's on there at the moment and it is slowly leaking so thankfully this part's actually not too hard to get to and we... cool so let's snug this back on plug our pcv in first we'll get our turbo down onto the snout there like that, bang, I might, I might use a bit of Vaseline on it, no that's better, okay, there we go, I just didn't line it up for the shot properly, there we go, put our tabs back, yeah, now we'll go, there we go, this side as well. So it's just it's just a matter of gently jimmying it team so it, it, it sits on properly. Remember to plug our three plugs back in so a PCV plug click bank one click and click. Okay, so those are back on. And finally, our um, our top hose. Oh, sorry, our top um, attachment to the turbocharger. Back on the top there, team. He does sit on a little um, bracket, so just make sure. He's sitting on the correct bracket and you're not doing it up with him half off it.
Let's start her up team just before we put all the um, covers back on. We'll start the motor up and make sure she's good. We'll just check the fluid, the oil level as well, make sure we've got the right amount. So guys, the oil level's perfect. Um, I just topped it up a little bit. We've probably ended up putting, putting about, um, oh, how much? Probably about 8.2 liters in total. The refill level is, is um, supposed to be um, 8.5, but as I say, we haven't actually drained 8.5 from it, so we're not going to fill it up more than 8.5. Um, yeah, it's simple, it's done. So now we just need to put our oil cap back on. Some I say these are a premium car, and I think that anyone who owns one and services one regardless of what it is or if it's used every day in the in the dust like this one is um, should always be looking its best so I always try and give everything a, just a quick clean just so it looks like it should do nice and shiny and and um, prestigious like Mercedes are <laughs> Team, we've got it out of the garage now and um, we want to reset the service light so it doesn't keep telling us that we're nearly due for a service so turn the car on to um, just the first ignition basically so engine lights and everything are still off but you know radio and stuff works and then you want to hold down um, the phone key and the OK button just like in the uh, 221 we've got as well um, and you want to do it while you're on the kilometers page so make sure you're showing the kilometers page. Hold those two. Cool, now we'll go down to Assist Plus. Full service. And then confirm full service. And uh, 251, yes we do have that oil in there. Can't be undone, that's fine, confirm. And then that'll reset the service, Assist Plus. Um, so we don't have the warnings anymore. So if I turn the car on and turn it off again, that will be fine. So start the motor up. Cool, good. Everything seems to be running well. So I'll take it for a road test. Um, but it should be pretty happy with everything now that we've done the we've done the service and put some fresh oil in there. Cool. Oh guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like and subscribe and um, if you've got any advice or if you'd like me to answer any questions about this car, anything at all um, or any of the cars in my garage currently or in the past, flick me a message and I hope you learned something new today. Cheers.